Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Philip and I'm a landscape photographer based in the Midwest. And on this channel, we talk about landscapes, nature, and traveling and how those go together. And in this video, I'm gonna give you five tips to improve your sunrise photography. Sunrise is the holy grail, right, for us as landscape photographers. It's when the light is at its best. Um, usually it's a little bit less less crowded, especially if you're like me and you travel to a lot of different national parks. Um, but sunrise is seriously where it's at. And I love shooting sunrise and I'm sure because you clicked on this video that you also like shooting it too. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give you five tips to get the most out of your sunrise photography. So tip number one is to tell a story. Now, what does that mean? Oh, you know, well, I, I woke up and I got in the car and I was really tired and I took some pictures and I went home, right? That is a story, but that's not the story we're talking about here because as photographers, we are visual storytellers, right? We, it's our job to convey to a viewer a visual story without really even saying any any words to that to that person and and that's our that's our job and that's our goal so so how do you do that in my opinion the best way to tell a visual story of a place is is to make sure you have the variety that you need right that tells a story of the location that you're in now uh, i'm assuming a lot of you are probably on instagram and we see these iconic images all of the time right so you have your 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 tunnel view in yosemite you have uh the shot off the the bridge in uh, zion national park of the watchman right you see these photos over and over again right and there and there's there's nothing wrong with taking those photos right iconic iconic places and iconic photos are iconic for a specific reason right these places are are beautiful they're very grand however you know the the shot of the watchman is only a a brief story of of what zion national park actually is right so how do we visually tell a story for this particular sunrise i was in colorado springs at the garden of the gods now uh this shot this first image i'm going to show you was the shot that i knew in my opinion told a summary of of what garden of the gods is right you know it has it's an amazing park in the middle of the city it has easy accessible walking paths for all for all people and it's got these beautiful red rock formations so this one view is an adventure selfie of myself walking um, in the garden of the gods uh, it gives a nice sense of scale so you so you as a viewer can get an idea of how big these rocks are uh, however, you know, that's only that's only once one small picture of what this whole park has to offer and and for me in my opinion it would have been a shame to only have taken that one picture and, and, and felt like I had captured it all so um, there's some other images that I captured uh, that are you know at different focal lengths and of different subjects that I think uh, help tell the story of this place a little bit better. So uh, tip number one, make sure you tell a story of a location. Tip number two is scout the location. Now for Garden of the Gods, let's, let's keep using that example. If you live in Colorado Springs, you know, or whatever, or if wherever you live, scouting should be pretty easy, right? So you can go to that location whenever you want in any type of light and kind of look around and in your mind, you can say, okay, well, this is what I think the light is gonna look like during sunrise. And this is what I think that I'll be able to use as a composition, right? So on for me though, I don't live in Colorado Springs, right? And, and you might be saying, well, you know, Philip, how do you have time to do that if you're, if you're traveling and you're not staying in a place very long? Um, this example, I, I actually did have a chance to um, come at sunset, which was a lot more crowded, and I knew to get that first image uh, with good light and, I, and with no one in the picture, I was going to have to come right away and get that shot done at sunrise. Uh, so that's what I did. However, I, I usually don't actually have time to visit locations more than once when I'm traveling. So what I do is I digitally scout. What I use for digitally scouting is Google Earth. Uh, it's an absolutely amazing resource uh, for me. Uh, it gives you a three-dimensional picture 
of a landscape and you can kind of use that to at least get a picture in your head of some things that might be possible when you get on location. I'll, I'll write those down or I'll have them uh, in my phone saved as notes and I can kind of at least when I get on location have an idea of what I want to shoot. If you want to learn how to use Google Earth in more detail I will link up here uh, to a video that I made explaining more about that process. So uh, tip number two just make sure you scout a location it'll just make your life way easier. Tip number three, have your gear ready. I can't, I can't tell you how important it is, and this is such a simple thing that maybe some of you are overlooking, um, but when you get up at four or five o'clock in the morning, depending on what time of year it is to go shoot sunrise, the last thing you really wanna be doing is putting batteries in your cameras or putting memory cards in or doing any of that nonsense, right? So I always have my camera in my bag, my batteries are charged, my memory card um, is, is probably a new memory card uh, for that day. Um, you know, my bag is at the door ready to go. My tripod is, you know, attached to my bag, you know. So the only thing I really have to do when I get up in the morning is put my clothes on and get out the door. You know, I don't want to have to be, you know, worrying about forgetting anything. You know, really, it's funny, we just came off Christmas. So like the, the scene that I'm thinking of is Home Alone 1, you know, when they leave Kevin, right? They woke up late, everyone was running around. It was complete and total chaos. And then what happens is that they left Kevin at the house and you know this can for a photographer you know I can't I've, I've left memory cards before uh, shooting locally uh, you know so the reason I know this tip is because I've made this mistake before and I would just love to save you the trouble of uh, going through that yourself so tip number three just make sure you have your gear ready tip number four so uh, now that you've had you've got your gear ready it's it's so important to know your gear and what does that mean right gear is is not important I will always say that I will always preach that on this channel it doesn't matter if you shoot with a cell phone a point-and-shoot uh, mirrorless DSLR I, I really don't care what you shoot with and it doesn't it doesn't matter but what what does matter and what is important is that you know how to use that gear and how how that gear is gonna help you convey that story and get the pictures that you want right so really you want to get to the point and this might be a little extreme but you want to get to the point where you can operate your camera blindfolded or with your eyes closed right so if you have command dials on on your camera like i do you know you want to make sure you know where what those command dials are doing how to how you know how to switch your iso if you need to how to switch your shutter speed how to switch your aperture um, if you want to shoot a time lapse you want to make sure that when the when the light is getting ready to to go off and hit right time is of the essence you know if you if you've shot sunrise before you know how fast that light changes so it's just really important that in that in the heat of the moment you know you've scouted you've done all this work uh just know your gear and that'll make your life a lot easier so probably maybe one of the, even the, the biggest tips really is to just know your gear inside and out uh, my fifth and final tip is to be early. I cannot stress enough how being early will completely change and elevate your photography. I mean, in the summer, no one likes getting up at four o'clock, right? That's obvious. You know, you're tired, you're grumpy, you may or may not have had coffee yet. If for me, you've definitely had coffee because I can't function without coffee that early in the morning. Being early not only is going to change your your own personal mood right when you're when you're in a rush you're you're not thinking you're not thinking correctly you're not going to be looking for those uh compositions um there's just a lot of chaos that goes on in your mind when you're rushing but so for me you know so what what's early then philip right so for me i usually try to get to a location at least an hour before before sunrise depending on obviously what you're doing you know if you're shooting blue hour in a city you know that's going to change because blue hour in a city kind of you know changes a little bit changes kind of your timing for things right um but in general an hour 
before whatever your whatever app you're using weather app you're using that says that this is what sunrise is so if sunrise is at six o'clock in the morning i usually like to be on location no later than five personally for me the old, the longer i've done photography even now it's like 4 30 right so when i was at the garden of the gods i was there at least i think it was about an hour hour 15 minutes before sunrise and it gave me the opportunity to work uh with some blue hour light and some some star photography so uh this image that i've shown you here you know it was it, i had time to uh compose the image uh because i actually didn't have time to uh, scout the night before so I, I had time to compose the image uh, get my focus um, go over to the location uh, light paint the rock and and do all of those things and you know you know check the exposure and make sure I had all the data that I had that or that I was going to need when I got home to edit and then still have time to get over to where I needed to be for sunrise so being early and, and having that time to just have a nice, peaceful, calm sunrise shoot is so important. And not only will you get better photos because you were early, but it's actually going to, uh, you know, put you in a better state of mind uh, to just enjoy nature because that's that's really what it's about, right? Like, if you're out taking picture, <laughs> pictures and you don't enjoy nature, I, I really don't know what you're doing there. Uh, but for me, I really just like the, the, the peace and the calm that I get from, from being outside. And, and I hope you do too. And I, and I think that being early, you know, as a photographer, right, I'm there. I have a job to do. Uh, you know, I'm here. I'm there to get pictures, but I'm also there to receive the benefits of nature too. So tip number five, uh, be early. Those are my five tips uh, that I hope will help you get better images that you're happy with at sunrise. If you liked this video, go ahead and leave a like. I would really appreciate it. It helps the video reach and help more people. Um, go ahead and comment down below some tips that you have that I personally didn't mention um, to help that help you get better sunrise images. And if you want to see more tutorial or travel vlog style videos in the future, go ahead and subscribe because that is what is coming up on the channel. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.